Negative 20. Wow. Right in the nick of time. <laughs> yeah. That's a blessing. <laughs> we got a few more people coming on, so we'll wait to uh, give them a minute. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Eight hours. Wow. Yeah. That's not too bad. And eight yeah. hours on the highway, right? It's not like, you know, uh, cute. I mean, it's not like that small road. It's just highway. About 100 yeah. and 120. So about uh, 70 miles. An hour. Yeah. Wow. 60 miles on average. Mm. Well, at least you're with family. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, our little guy, the youngest one, got the taste of driving on the highway. Yay! <laughs> Have fun doing it, yes? Well, he's doing it. You can answer later. <laughs> yeah. He enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> All right. When you get older, you'll hate it. <laughs> oh. No, I'm just kidding. I'm the only one who's lazy like that because I think, oh my God, I got to sit for eight hours. But then I find the beauty of it, so it kind of works out. Yeah. That's a blessing. Uh -huh. Definitely a blessing. Mm. I think we, we have to enjoy uh, the, the, the moving of the physical body. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we we um, the time, right? And, you know, to get somewhere, anywhere. Right. Well, you, you get tired of looking at the four walls, some people say. Yeah. yeah. You change the scenery, so you go look at Anthony's four walls. <laughs> yeah. And then he'll travel eight hours and go look at your four walls, and then... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Family wow. different, different kind of wall. Hello, my sister. Hi. Hello. 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 Welcome, thank you. How are you? Good. Blessed on top and rising. Amen to that. Amen. Such a blessing. Any praise reports, by the way? Yes, Anson. So on Saturday, I, I shared this with my mom yesterday. On Saturday, for some reason, I had the urge to go to get groceries. Uh -huh. But I completely forgot the fact that a lot of people are... Uh, no, there, there are limits to how many people can be in a grocery store or a place at a time. So when I got there, there was a queue. And so I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. But I queued anyway. So I went to queue anyway. And, and the lady in front of me just turned back and started chatting with me. And the first thing she said was like, man, I've been in this queue for like at least an hour. It is so long. And I was like, oh, is it that long? And... And she was like telling me of how, how, how everyone was panicking, whatever it is. And, and that's probably that why they're taking their time trying to fill up all the, the, the shopping carts that they got and whatever it is. And I just told her, you know what? Honestly, at this point in time, there's no point in panicking. Uh, you, you can't do anything. You, you, you just, you're just going to be jumping all around and you're not going to be relaxed. And this, you know, you're going to miss more stuff by the time you get in there because you'd be panicking. You, just, you can either chat with me or play with your phone. Honestly, I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she ended up chatting with me instead. And I told her that, you know what? Yeah, maybe maybe the, the, the guys inside are just finishing up, so it's not a big deal. And and I and, and all of us got it in five minutes. Oh, wow. <laughs> and when I was inside, I told I uh, I uh, when when I was queuing, I can feel the fear around me. And I told myself, no, everything's okay. Everything's just in peace and, and everyone will be will be safe. And, and we'll get the groceries that we need when we get in there. So right. it's not a big deal. So as I got in, the whole row of vegetables was available. Oh. <laughs> but, but the whole two rows of, of meat products was near to non-existent. <laughs> well, and you're vegetarian, so... <laughs> exactly. And, and so the same lady caught to me and then she was like, I can't seem to find meat at all. And I was like, have you looked at the gross, uh, at, the, at, the, at the vegetable aisle? And she's like, oh no, I haven't. And it's like, that was the first thing we see when we enter though. <laughs> yeah, right? Something that's healthy for you, vegetables. Yeah, yeah. That is so, so awesome. Question, so how long did it take you from the time you got into the queue to get in? Five, 10 minutes. Whoa. 
And the lady you've been sitting after for how long? At least an hour, according to her. Wow. That's a blessing. So you didn't have to wait an hour, huh? No. <laughs> Cannot make this stuff up. <laughs> did you pray before you went? Of course well, I wasn't did. thinking of that. Uh, I was just telling myself, okay, I need some vegetables because I'm going to cook something up for my family the next day. And Remember, that's a prayer. Oh. Thoughts of prayers. There you go. And so I, I only had one goal, and that's to get what I need. And as soon as I got there, I, I got what I need. Mm -hmm. And you didn't get in the fear, but you felt fear around you. Remember we talked about feeling that energy around us in our aurora field? And it's so thick that you can, quote unquote, cut it with a knife. Mm -hmm. And then when you said, no, I'm not going to submit to fear, all doors open up unto you. Does that make sense? That's the blessing. And then you went and got all your vegetables. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. Yeah. Hello, Dad. My father's online. Uh, Hello. 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 How y'all doing? Doing good. Yeah. Good. Any other praise reports? <laughs> <laughs> Any yeah. other testimonies? That's good. That's good. That's good. God is good. All the time. Yes, Lily. Oh. Um. Well, before before we land, so I kind of. Uh, prepare, uh, prepare that the journey is small, is uh, going to be small. And uh, so we arrive uh, in eight hours, right? Which is uh, pretty good. It's supposed to be close to 10 hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, somebody actually drove faster. <laughs> as long as you made it safe and you didn't get a ticket, right? Yeah. <laughs> slightly, slightly faster. Slightly faster? Yeah. And then they say, you know, it's 120. I say, I don't feel it. No, 120 is like, <laughs> yeah, 70 something miles. I say, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we are on page 390. And the title is, Be the Presence of the Love that God is. And this is probably one of my favorites. I'm already getting goosebumps behind it. So how do you be the presence of the love that God is? Anyone? Kind of interesting title when you think. Yes. So anyone? Don't all, don't all rush it once. What was the question again? <laughs> How do you be the presence of the love that God is? God is love and God is light. You are in the image and the likeness of God, which you are love and you are light. You're just, just an extension of God. Be you. Just be you. So be <laughs> you. Okay. Be yourself filled with love. Be yourself filled with love. All right. What else? Be love. Be love, okay? Be the light in the darkness. Be the light, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, she's on Facebook. Say what? She's on Facebook and type your name in. That's what I did. Oh, that's my name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bless his heart. <clears throat> when you be present, think about it. When is present your presence? What is your presence? What is your presence? I did, let's identify that first. You're breaking so, up. If you don't know your presence, then it would be hard to understand love that God is. Mm. Mm. So what is, what is your presence? In order to be the presence, what is your presence? Ooh, has it, so, anyone ever thought of that? So it's uh, the presence being that you can help others to connect with God. Hmm. Okay. 
and show them that it's love. I mean, yeah, God is love. So all you have to do is learn to love mm -hmm. unconditionally. So in that moment, let your light shine. When you yes. let your light shine so the people can see God through you. Okay. Y'all said the same thing, different ways? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anyone else? You're both right. Okay. As long as I'm right. <laughs> you're, both, you're both right. Because okay. when you become the presence, think about presence. Would you say... My, when have you ever noticed a person when they walked in, they have a presence about them that might be demanding or, you know? Yeah, as soon as they walk in, everybody turns around and notices them. What yes. makes people notice that presence? It depends. It depends. Um, yep. It could be. It could be. There's different things about them that. <laughs> I would think that it's your energy. The outer it's thing, the thing. It could be um, that personality. It could be um, their clothes. It could be their hair. It could be their smile. Mm -hmm. It could be several different things. Okay. It could be their presence is what you. You know, they walk in, like when I walk in, I automatically say, hello, everybody, you know, and I think that the love that I have for people automatically fills the room. Okay. All right. Lily? I, I think it's the, the energy that you bring, mm -hmm. wherever you are, and mm -hmm. uh, people, if if you're in the same vibration, people will connect with you. Absolutely. You said when you walk in, you tell everybody hello. Yeah. So you announce your presence. Mm -hmm. Lily yeah. said you can walk in and people will feel that energy. Mm -hmm. All these attributes you describe, but really, when you really narrow it down, it's the energy they're feeling. Mm -hmm. You're feeling the presence, your presence in essence, is your spirit. It is right. your beingness. Remember, I always I told you, I do that because I'm shy. Remember I said that? I do that to take the attention off of me. Mm -hmm. And that was your wall. Yes. So that wasn't your presence because you gave them something else. So when you're, as Lily say, vibrating with everybody else think about this energy has to connect with like energy right so if the negative energy is there and positive walks in it has to be a struggle who what energy wins mm -hmm. right so right. if i'm high vibration which god is love and you walk in and hey everybody and, Li and lily walks in and because you don't say, hey, everybody, but because of the energy of love flows out, everybody immediately turns. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same energy. You get right, it? Right, right. I get that. But I'm saying that happens automatically, but I automatically speak because of that. Right. Because but you people put it as a defense. turn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. to throw them away off of me, I go ahead and speak because I want it to be over. Now watch this. When you do it, they start talking to you, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then I, but I still can control the conversation because right. I started it. Right. And those those are just security measures that once yeah. you meet those things, you no longer need them. Right. Now, when you walk in, it's generally hello, it's really to give unto another love yeah. instead yeah. of putting up a wall yes defense. when you put up a wall to defense it's really hard to learn your brothers and sisters because we have a perception about them going in because i'm shy i don't want them to know something about me so i'm gonna i'm gonna huddle up when 
how can you let your light shine? No, I have nothing to hide. It's not that I don't want them to know anything about me. It's just that I want to control the conversation because I'm shy. And if I'm not the one talking, I'm going to tell you everything while I'm talking anyway. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you everything anyway. You're not going to get a chance to ask me. I'm going to tell you everything. So if you do in turn ask me a question, I'm going to answer that question. Mm -hmm. But before you get a chance, I'm going to tell you. Got it. So that was your, your defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. To the Got point it. that they'll walk away because they'll say, oh, she talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Motor mouth, got it. <laughs> Amen. All right. So when you understand your presence, which is love, when you enter a room, that love is going to dominate the room. Amen. Now favor is added unto you because now you're remembering who you are because of that presence. Think about where the presence is. Greater is he who is what? in me than he who was in the world. So if the greater he who was in me, that's the presence. Right. The greater he has to be the love in me. So when I speak, I'm only speaking and creating when? Out of love. So now that is the love that God is. Now what it does, it teaches me that in my present state of mind, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to Personally, we're not going to do any of those things to you. We're going to love you right where you are because there is no coincidence in our meeting. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What can we create this day that offers to the world the grace of the good, the holy, and the beautiful? What can we create this day that offers to the world the grace of the good, the holy, and the beautiful. Everybody get that? What can we create this day? Everybody's fearful of what's going on. So what can we create this day to offer to the world grace, favor, the good, the holy, and the beautiful? Interesting thought, huh? When we meditated, yesterday and day before yesterday this should help with this answer we were creating right what were we creating when we were meditating for the fourth and the fifth of april well-being for the world Ooh, yes yes mm -hmm. good holy beautiful well-being yes deliverance peace cure, yes. cure, compassion. Mm -hmm. no fear some were praying, hey, let's let this thing quickly be end. over. Yeah. yeah. Let it be over. Healing. Absolutely. Healing is a great one. Does that make sense? Let me, uh, let me see. All right. I'm going to unmute everybody. All right. Good. Make sure your TVs are, are turned low and background noises are turned low, please. <laughs> Does everybody understand that? So when we meditated, it was healing. No, that's you. for everybody, Daddy. <laughs> for everybody? Oh, okay. Oh, I, I didn't know you could hear me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when we all meditated, it was really a calming of the mind and when we calm the mind, we affected the environment around us. That's why I said one of you affected 300,000 people when you meditated. Same as when you pray, now you're asking for something. Right. But when you're asking for something, you have to know in faith, believing that it's what? Already done. Mm -hmm. With no lacking or no unbelief. That makes sense. Where is fear still abiding in my mind that prevents the presence 
of the love of God. The woman that Anson was talking about, think about it. She had been standing in line for a whole hour and was what? Fearful that there wasn't going to be enough. Is that the, is that the correct analogy? Anson, yes? For the most part? Hello, Melissa. Think about it. How much fear did she tell to the person before Anson got there? We don't really know, but think about that. If she was willing to tell him the story, I'm pretty sure she had to tell somebody else that story. Mm -hmm. Because most people are impatient. They don't want to wait an hour. We are, we are get it and go culture or generation. We want it right then and right now. Nobody really wants to wait because if we wait too long, it becomes a what? A problem. Not that they had any important place to go, but it's the fear that drives. And I'm glad he mentioned he could feel the what? Energy of fear around him. And had to say, I'm not going to submit to this energy of fear around me. And then he shifted to, okay, there's no meat, but there's vegetables. And then watch this. Did you and the woman follow the same trail or did she catch you coming around and then, hey, there's no meat type thing? She went ahead to the meat section first. So she left you? Yep. And had to come find you to tell you that there was no meat. Yeah, she rushed there. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting how that works. Don't know the lady, but she's going to purposely come find you to tell you there ain't no meat. And then he gives her a great lesson. Well, there's vegetables. Oh, wow, there's vegetables. Didn't think about that. And then she does what? Run to the vegetable aisle and grabs all her vegetables. Notice that once he got there, she stopped complaining about being there for an hour in shortage. Mm -hmm. She went from negative to positive because he planted the seed and it didn't take long. And that's what the meditation does because it actually continues to open because you still carry that presence within you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now you're able to be aware, this is not the energy that I'm going to experience, but I'm going to change the energy around me. So now this woman began to tell a different story to everybody around her. Hey, there's vegetables over here. Yay, there's not lack. Mm -hmm. Probably changed her old diet. She probably need to eat some vegetables. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't eat vegetables anyway. <laughs> so we don't know. But it was a good thing. <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. Questions, comments, concerns about that. So question, how do you know when you're in the presence of God's love? Oh, everybody's hands should be going up. I can feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Okay. Who else? I know when I'm in presence because my body, you know how when people say, oh, you give me goosebumps or that, that gave me goosebumps. Feel it. It's funny because I was so busy. Well, I, I don't want to confess that. But anyway, oh, I just got off um, doing a lot of work with my um, job. You know, this is our first day back and we're doing distance learning. Um, I didn't feel the, the joy until I just got online because at first I was like, oh, wow, it's 7.15. But the anointing, as soon as I got on, oh my God, I felt the anointing. I There's really power from all of you. I felt all of your energy immediately. Mm, shift. When two or three are gathered in his name, we become the presence that God is love. Mm. That makes sense? It makes a lot of sense because I gathered together with a lot of people and I didn't feel what I'm feeling right now. Exactly. Because of the energy is different. That's Everything right. you do with it, it's going to be two energies you're always going to deal with. What are they? Negative and positive. Okay. Give it another word. Love and fear. Love and fear. <laughs> love and fear. Those are the two emotions that most people deal with. Love and fear. Negative or positive. You're, you're absolutely right. Those two emotions we have to deal with. And people satisfying, think, not satisfying. Satisfying, not satisfying. Absolutely. Right-minded, wrong-minded. Mm -hmm. So now, 
what Anson did was shift her mind from wrong-minded thinking to right-minded thinking. In God's love, there is no shortage. Yes. Even though there was no meat, Anson showed her there's no shortage. Mm -hmm. Shift your attention from not satisfied to, okay, now I'm satisfied. Yes. Right? Yes. Anybody else know when they're in the presence of God's love? Sister Williams says she gets booth gumps. Sonia yes. says she gets the feeling. Anyone else? Sometimes it's that other people telling me that they can feel it from me. Ooh, the presence. Yeah, yeah. and, and there's getting more and more people telling me that, even though I, I'm just doing ordinary things. You're not ordinary, you're supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> because greater is he who is in me, so you have to be God in the flesh. Look, you're God Jr. So when you <laughs> identify yourself as God Jr. and a child of God in the image and the likeness, and you own that presence, when you walk in, people start identifying you as, hey, wow, you're light, or hey, you're this, or in all positive ways. That's right. Notice she didn't go to them. They came to her. Yes. Yeah. Do you Is that a correct that's analogy, Lily? That's, a, that's yeah. good. That's good. The law of attraction says because she was already in love, this person was seeking love and wanted more love or share love or experience love. Whatever the case might be. Yes. She might need to go to Liddy and get some love. Amen. Yeah. Right. We don't know. She might have been had a hard day. Notice that each one of y'all intuitively gave wisdom out of love to those who were in despair. Beautiful. They did not feel the presence of God's love until you showed up because you were in love with God. Right. So in love. So in love. Ooh, so in love with him. Wherever oh. the soul of your feet shall tread upon, God has given you dominion over that land. Oh. And showed up 15 minutes. He didn't have to wait an hour. Got what he needed and was back at home to prepare the meal for the family. Yes, Jesus. That makes sense? Favor. Favor. Some people get lightheaded. Some people speak in tongues. Some people shout. Some people cry tears of joy. Yeah. Some people just sit in silence because of the awe of God. Yes. Yeah. Somebody, somebody told me that she, she no longer speak because she, she ran out of words to say, no more tears. <laughs> Must be very sad, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When you guys walk in, you electrify the room when you're in the right vibration, when you're in the right Christ mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You elevate people, which somebody said healing when we were asking what that was. And when you are in, when you feel the presence of God's love coursing through your body, through your veins, or however you feel it, People around you feel that energy too. It becomes like a mop to a flame and they want more of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they can't identify other than you are the source that it's coming from. Yes, that's true. So I now they seek you out for healing or for knowledge or for wisdom. Yes, Lily? But I don't that's, feel, that's, I, that's I don't true. feel anything. It's not for you to feel, it's for them to feel. They're the ones expressing their feelings to you. You just walked in normal in your mind saying, this is what I want, this is why I want it. I'm a deliberate creator. I'm in love with God, great is he who is in me. This is, you're not thinking like that, you know what I'm saying? But it's still planted within your spirit, in your consciousness. In other words, you don't look at the negative, you look more at the positive things or the positive aspects of what's going on. You don't take things personal. You don't get impatient about things. That's true. That's you true. You know how to talk to the universe. Yeah. So when I see uh, 
people who are sick or unwell, I would say you get better, you get better, you know, you, you'll be fine. And they'll go like, oh, uh, you're so positive. I said, well, it's not that I'm positive, but that's, that's where you want to go, right? Mm -hmm. And they call and go like, yeah. <laughs> well, you have to set your mind there. Go, oh, okay. Ship. And see how, look at the blessing and the knowledge just to get revelation to give to that person. Amen. Because they mm -hmm. couldn't comprehend something as simple as Lily said. And in, in other words, is that a satisfying thought that you're thinking? Yeah. Well, no. Nope. Would you rather be positive? Well, she, want, she wanted to say no, but she couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> it would sound crazy. It's exactly. So she had to force the, well, yeah, I want to be positive. <laughs> in other words, who really didn't, I thought of it, but I couldn't get there. Mm. Now you gave me a pathway to get there. It's it's like when if I'm talking to someone who like who doesn't really create, and if I'm standing there and if I tell them what like what Lily said, they're okay, right? But if I'm talking to any of you people then my cup will run over and I get very emotional because it's too much. It's too much God in me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't hold it in mm -hmm. and, and I'm full of tears. I'm full of everything. It's too much for me to hold in. So anybody who has a lot of God in them, I will feel it mm -hmm. and it will be too much for me to hold. Mm -hmm. And I, my conversation, I will have to start it off like I start off with you or my cousin, and I'll say, hold on, I'm getting too emotional because I can't hold in what he's giving me. It's too much for me, you know? A lot of love. And that's yes. a love that most people want to experience, they can't. And yes. when you get it, you feel it. Yeah, it's so much. It's overwhelming sometimes. It's just like, like I want to open up my chest and just let it all out. Like, you ever seen a Care Bear cartoon? <laughs> <laughs> With the little heart? <laughs> yes, and it's just like, <laughs> yep. I want to do that. And that's, in, when, in essence, you're already doing that. Remember, when the thought is there, thought becomes what? Things. Yes, yes, there you go. You're when you right. pour out your heart, you've already given to them without even speaking the words. Amen. The, word, the words confirm the action. Amen. The words confirm what you're trying to express vibrationally. Make sense? Oh, yes. So the affirmation for tonight, I am the presence of of God's love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody get that? Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank amen. you. Everybody want to, somebody read the first line for me, if you have it. Listen very carefully. Indeed, mm -hmm. listen very carefully. If you would know the love of God, you must be that love. Ooh. You cannot know about it. You Ooh, must. Fast. Slow down. Hold on. Go oh. back. If you would know the love of God, <laughs> you must what? Be that love. You got to what? Know. You got to be it. You understand that? I do indeed. When do we Ooh. create? When do we create? In the when? When we're in, in the now. In the now. In the now. Mm -hmm. now, faith is a substance of what? Things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. I got to be in the now. I got to know now. You get it? Yeah. This is why I'm always reinforcing I and my father are one. I want to get to know that love of God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So to know the love of God, I have to be the love of God. That's why what was the first what was the first exercise that we ever did? Everybody remember? 
Uh, non judgmental. Nope. Unconditional Close. love. Unconditional. Yep. Unconditional love. That was the first 30 day lesson that we learned mm -hmm. because, in order for us to know God, we had to learn what unconditional love was. Mm -hmm. When we went through it, let me ask you a question, kind of off track. When we practiced, that 30 days for those who did it, did you see a change in your lives? Definitely. Absolutely. You begin to see more love than you did what? Fear. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Thank you. you cannot know about it. You must literally be the presence of that love. Only then do you know God. This then is the essence of the way of knowing knowing by being that which you have knowledge or direct experience of and by choosing to be only that. So I had to only choose what? Love. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah. Yep. This, is, this is why knowledge is a mystical experience. This is why true knowing has an immediacy. It is not meditated through a theology, a religion, a philosophy, or any words Words are just symbols of symbols. They are symbols of ideas, and ideas are step away from reality. One who knows love knows it because every cell of their being is the what? Presence of love. Everybody get that? So when I asked you what that presence was, everybody gave me their version of what they feel when they connect with God. And there are several ways. Would you all agree? How many of you know this was God and I can't deny this was God experience? Anyone? Yeah. Yes, no, maybe so? Yes. Yes. Anybody yeah. not know? Amen. Hey, let me say this. Everybody has. Mm -hmm. Whether you think you ever have it, you have. It was one of the, yes, lady. Sometimes it's that um Sometimes that like you say it's a miracle and then you, you kind of realize that this is beyond your doing and then you have to give, give it as probably God has um, done something for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I have seen it uh, for other people, for my family, um, you know, and so good things happen to them. Absolutely. The love of God yeah. that we would call a miracle, and that miracle should not be awe. Miracles are not to be in awe. They are to be glorified because it's a blessing from the Father. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yes. Pastor, what page are you on? Uh, we're on page 390. 390. Be the presence of love that God is. You got it? Yes. Okay. The way of knowing culminates with your perfect resolve to be the presence of love of God is. The way of knowing. Everybody say, I know the I love know. of God. I know. I know the love of God. I know. I know the love of God. I know. I know. I know. Feels good, doesn't it? Yes. No. Now, if you would truly know love, look upon the things that you fear. Discover them. Dig them up out of yourself. Rest assured, any time you must look at another and analyze them, there is something you fear. Anything that pushes your buttons is a sign that something is still requiring your love. Anybody got that problem still? Yeah. I'm going to keep my hand up because yeah. I have to work on some buttons. I'm still moving buttons around. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I should probably just take the buttons off. <laughs> so nowadays when I deal with the buttons, it's that... Um, I will send them love first. 
<laughs> right? And it seems like it seems like they they kind of soften and <laughs> they respond in love. And sometimes I I become you know surprised. Yep, absolutely. Sister Sonja, Sister Robinson. I have my hand up. I got you. Go ahead. <laughs> No, no, no. I was just having my oh, hand up. I got some hallelujah. Things. Amen. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, that is, those are things that we still constantly work on. Uh -huh. I was having a conversation with one of my good friends in San Diego and um, they're still in religion, which is okay. I meet people where they're at. And she thought because of how I believe that I was antagonizing her. And I said, no, we've been friends too far along for me to push your buttons. I don't need to push your buttons. I'm trying to understand where you're coming with your believing. And it was mm -hmm. around fear and the Bible scriptures and things like that. And I don't debate people over the Bible and scriptures. And I said, okay, because once you store a scripture, they're gonna throw a scripture and now we got a, a battle of the scriptures and that serves no purpose. So I was just merely saying, well, hey, when are we going to really trust God, you know, for some things, da, 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 da. Long story short, she had to come back and say, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, I took it the wrong way. Misunderstood, you know, and she had to, cor she had to fix that button. And I wasn't even trying to push the button. But the button was pushed and then offense came up and I went, wait a minute, I'm not trying to offend you. I'm not trying to judge you. I'm not trying to even debate you or even do a right or a wrong. I'm just trying to get an understanding of where, you, where you're coming from in this conversation so that we can have an understanding conversation. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That way it's not a, a, a bumping of the heads and now she hang up and oh, I hate you. And now 25 years of friendship down the drain over, you know, misunderstanding, which could have been easily avoided. Does that right. make sense? Right. And this happens all the time where we get offended or we offend someone. And sometimes it is done purposely, but majority of the time it is not. Mm -hmm. And most of the time you don't even know you offended that person until they say something. Yes. And you have to go, oh, man. I'm, I'm, my, I had to say, hey, I'm not a. I apologize the way I came. I didn't mean it like that, and you know, I had to clean it up. Mm -hmm. Because, like I told her, I would rather be at peace than to be right. Mm -hmm. But friendship is more important than what thus said the Lord, scriptural. Because at the end of the day, my God says there should be no division amongst us, and we're all one. So if we're going to practice one, then I have to say, okay, I can respect where you are, which you're believing, and that's okay. We can move on from there. So not only did she have to work on a button, I had to work on a button. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So now y'all know pastors still got to work on buttons, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it makes you more loving once you identify. I had to ask myself, okay, why did that really kind of somewhat bother me, if you will. Does that make sense? Yeah. Once I went, okay, we can agree to disagree on these things and still be in love, and it's okay. So I didn't stay there long, but I went there briefly. Most people stay there and can't recover because now it's the argument. Don't talk for days, years, months, and then when time goes by, they forget sometimes what they were fighting about. <laughs> right? Can somebody read that next portion on page 391? The way of knowing, beloved ascended masters, can culminate only in the transformation of your mind to such a level of completion that you sit in your chair and say, there is only God. There has Absolutely. never been separate me. There mm. never could have been. Mm. There's only this moment in which love can dance, can be celebrated, and can be extended. Father, what can we create this day that offers the world the grace of the good, the holy, and the beautiful? Mm. I once described 
the highest state of consciousness, highest state of purification, is one in which the child has awakened and looks around him or her and sees to infinity. They see not where they begin and the father ends, for such is their union, such is their marriage, such is their dance in the uniform of the formed, the source and the created, the creator and the creating. Such is the outcome of marriage that one cannot look and see where the soul ends and the creator begins. You know how beautiful that is? You don't know where your soul begins and the father's end. That's how close you and the father are. Mm -hmm. Everybody should say amen to that. That's a yeah. balloon you and the father. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. That's how much of a one you're supposed to be. That's how much of a one. That becomes the presence of the mm -hmm. love that God is. Mm. That becomes that knowing. Okay? Yet the awakened mind knows that it's still the created. Remember we had everybody on, I said it proclaimed that you are God and everybody went, I'm the little G. And I said, well, we know you're the little G. <laughs> we all know you children of God. God just wants the what? Relationship. So now you understand that you are the created and not the creator. So now mm -hmm. you put the little G and be assured of the little G, okay? <laughs> and it is surrendered in perfect joy each moment. Father, what would you have me do? What is your will for me? Everybody should ask that every day that they open up their eyes. Something, something to that effect. In other words, you remember we taught the lesson on surrender and allowing? When you surrender, you're surrendering your free will to the will of the Father that his will be done. So I have to surrender my will and allow the Father to do the work. What will your will, what is your will for me? Go down the street, turn left, talk to Joe. Joe going to tell you about Sam. Sam going to leave you five miles and up the tree, there's going to be a bag of money. That's going to pay all your bills <laughs> and your family bills. <laughs> right? I'm exaggerating, but you get the point. Got that call today. You got that about, call? Got that call today about surrendering. You, you my confirmation. <laughs> every time every time I, you cannot make this stuff up can't make it up when you surrender you begin to allow and now you understand where the where your soul ends the father's begins and where his ends yours begins and that's the now that becomes <laughs> the oneness of the father so the awakened mind yes. surrenders not into subservience but because sanity has returned I'm right-minded now. I'm thinking like my father. I have the mind of Christ, which is the mind of perfect freedom. Now I know what is right <laughs> and what is wrong. Does that make sense? Now I understand revelation and discernment. <laughs> now these things are making sense to me, and now I understand how to apply them. Okay? <laughs> It recognizes that it has never been the tiny gnat whining and complaining and trying to make life work the way it thinks it ought to work. It surrenders what? Each moment. Why? Because we in the now. So in order for me to surrender each moment, I got to be what? In the now, but how must my now be? In love. Yes. Where am I standing now in my love of creation? with the creator. Does that make sense? Thank you, Jesus. And this is where yes. it retrains the mind. Every day. Thinking that you are lonely, <laughs> depressed, sad, without, or any of those things. It removes that, okay? It dissolves in each moment. It knows that only the love of God is real and says, Father, what will you have me do? How many of y'all ever heard that voice that gave you good direction? Some of you call it intuition. Some of you call it the voice of the God, the voice of the angels, the Holy Spirit, whatever. Mm -hmm. How many have that? Yeah. 
Amen. All of us. How many of you have learned to trust that voice? <clears throat> Everybody should raise their hand. Yeah. Some people call it a gut, a gut in, what is it? A gut, uh, a gut, instinct. what is it? Instinct. Yeah, gut instinct. Your intuition or, or mother's intuition. Mm -hmm. Whatever label you put on it is still connecting you to father, what will you have me do? Mm -hmm. And then through revelation, you get it. And then it's discerned and now action is taken. Say this, do this, decree this, bless him, bless her, heal them, heal her. Don't heal them, don't heal her. You get it? And what it does is it opens itself and receives the pebbles being dropped into the pond. Now, not by its own hand, but by the hand of grace, mm -hmm. the perfect hand of mystery that we have called what? Abba, Father. Everybody get that? Mm -hmm. That love, that creative source, that power, that joy, that sublime, sweet, sweet mystery, that constantly creating, for love must what? Extend itself. So each time you connect with the Father and you're in the presence of another, it's love extending itself through you to another. Mm. Now you see miracles take place. Now you see the supernatural. Now there's things that you cannot explain and you start saying, hey, it's working. Hey, this is not a coincidence. Hey, this is a blessing. Hey, this is a testimony. Hey, this is a gift from God. Does that make sense? Can somebody read that next part? Let me catch my breath. <laughs> No longer is there concern or worry over the body. No longer is there concern or worry over the state of the world. No longer is there concern or worry over anything. There is only the eternal dance of creation. Mm. The awakened mind knows that it is participant in perfect mystery. Mm -hmm. There are no longer any blocks or, or fears whatsoever. Yes. No longer blocks, no fears. Say no blocks, no fears. Mm -hmm. No blocks, no, block, no fears. Yes. No blocks, no fears. Hallelujah. Because once we get those oh, blocks out of it, fear has to leave. Does that make sense? Yes. Now you have access to the kingdom of God. And now all is given unto you freely. Make sense? <laughs> Somebody read the next part for me. And whenever you find yourself, if you are asked to be crucified, dead and buried, so you shock the world into realizing that there is something else besides surviving, you do it. Yes. It is given unto you to write books, you write them. So mm. what? Ooh. Somebody's in here writing books. Who's writing books? Yeah. I Ooh. am. Oh, there it is. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Ain't that a blessing? Glory God, yes. If you write these books, the people who read these books will be blessed by the book. The schools that they attend will be blessed by the schools that they attend that you teach them in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now I am a deliberate creator. Hallelujah. You are not attached. The flow of creativity is moving through you. If you're asked to take a simple picture that I placed in the mind of a certain artist and distributed to 15 million people, you simply do it because you are no longer attached to your ego. If love asked you through me or through another to move to the far ends of the earth to a build a hut and chant, you go do it. What's the problem? There is not any. You are free as the wind. Only those born of the spirit know the what? Spirit. Mm. Y'all don't know this flesh. Y'all know my what? Spirit. Because when we come together, two or three together, we meet in the what? Spirit. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must what? Worship him in spirit and in truth. So we have to worship in spirit and what? In truth. So when I connect with each and one of you, 
I'm meeting you where? In the spirit. And then we come and have a natural thing. But it's already done supernatural. Does that make sense? Yeah. You don't know where it came from. You don't know where it's going. You totally confuse the mind of humankind. You are free. Well, you listen to no other voice, but the voice of what? Love. Yeah. The reason why you listen to the voice of love is because the voice of love will guide you in your action. <laughs> Father, what will your will be? What will your will be for me? Or Father, your will be done is the same thing as this is listening to the voice of love. And guess what? Let me tell you this. Does that voice of love make sense at that time? No. <laughs> it no. makes no sense no. whatsoever. But do we obey it? Yes. Absolutely. This is when we begin to trust in the Lord with all your mind, with all your heart, and what? With all your soul. Because now I learn to listen to the voice of love. So now as I begin to meditate, the presence of God comes in and begins to give me the answer to my problems. He begins to give me the prayers that I need to pray. When there's someone who's brokenhearted, now the Holy Spirit comes in and says, merely ask me to soothe your brother or sister's broken heart. And then you begin to minister unto them love. And now they begin to change their countenance from whatever state they are negative into that which is positive. Holy God. Yeah. That's what this is about. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What would you hold on to in a world of illusion? Some people hold on to drugs. Some people hold on to things that are that are distracting them from advancing to where they really need to be. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Learn to discover the content that pervades all form, and you will taste the perfect freedom, the alleviation of pain that comes with attachment to the form, even your own. You want to get rid of pain? I just gave you a key. Mm. You want to get rid of pain? Here's your key. Yeah. Everybody get that? Even your very thought that yesterday you thought were true, today you've been taken even more deeply into love, and what is in the past is allowed to pass away. Yesterday I thought I knew God. Today I know God even more deeply because I have rescinded my need to be right about what I once knew to be true. Father, woo. Father, here's what, and I'm sharing you what I say. Father, give me more of you. I want more of you. I desire more. You are intimate. You are beloved. I want only to die in you ever more and ever deeper. Give me more of you taste you, devour you, to die in you more and more. This has to be the presence that you need to be in to understand love that God is. Does that make sense? You have to constantly want more of God every second of your lives. Every minute, I want more. Once you, How many of you have a favorite food or a favorite thing you like to do? Anybody? Absolutely. I want you to, in your mind, magnify that a million times if you can. And I want you to say, I want that like I want God. Glory, God. Hallelujah. That should have took everybody to another place. It did. So does it mean that um, I'm going to love uh, God more than my shopping? Yes. <laughs> because now you know you own the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You got to work with me. That's how God thinks. I own the shop. Wherever the sole of my foot should tread upon, God has given me dominion. 
Whatsoever I desire, when I pray, believe, I shall what? Receive them and I shall what? Have them. Amen. For all the promises of him is yea and him is amen. There's no no. God is the purse. God is the store. God is the hanger. God is the tag. God is the breath that we breathe. Come on. Without God, you can really pick up your head. So yes, God is more than the shopping, but he's the pleasure in the shopping. Because when you find that bag, it's his voice. that Lily, go over there, and when that lady moves, you go over there and move that bag over here and reach right back in the back and reach over there and pull it out, and there's that bag, because we've seen you do it. <laughs> All right? And you listen to that voice to go find that bag or that item or that person or that thing or that whatever. You're in the flow of it. Does that make sense? So more and more becomes an eternal journey without an end to a goal that has never changed. Journey with no distance, only to the sublime experience of tasting God and then surrendering that taste in order to taste it even more. Then I tell you, every time you get a new beverage, act like it's new. Every time I get my ginger tea, I don't care how many times I drink it a day, five. It's new five times. <laughs> And I make sure I use the same amount of honey, same temperature. Mm -hmm. And I go, I've never had this in my life. And then all of a sudden, I enjoy it so much. Don't we all do that in a sense? You might not tell yourself that, but when you go shopping or doing your thing, you're looking for the experience of the joy within that desire of experiencing. Am I wrong? Absolutely. If not, wouldn't do it. <laughs> okay. Oh, You're teaching good tonight. Hey, Amen. Uh, lost my place. Somebody help me. Oh, love comes to supplant fear, and learning to jump in order to receive the parachute becomes a delightful game to play. Remember when I say have fun being a deliberate creator with source creator? That's it. If we told you to watch this, how many y'all? would jump out of the airplane with no parachute. What? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase okay, let me rephrase it again. Did I ever say the airplane was off the in the air or on the ground? Oh <laughs> the airplane was still on the ground. <laughs> I, I was thinking, I was thinking I need more information. <laughs> I figured as much, but just on that information, everybody went, Pastor, you're crazy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I never, right? The, the, air, the airplane is on the ground, so you can jump out of the plane without a parachute. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor would not let you go put yourself in danger. Mm -hmm. Right? But do you, do you understand? The trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your, that's the trust that he's asking for us every day. He don't give you all of the information. He gives you, will you jump out of the parachute? Will you jump out of the plane with no parachute? Mm -hmm. You have to get revelation oh, and make a discernment. Lord, is this of God or is this something else? Mm -hmm. Try the spirit is what it says. Now you understand, right? That's good. Uh, somebody help me. More and more becomes a <laughs> journey without end to a goal that has never changed. Mm -hmm. No, when I decided to allow the crucifixion. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, when I decided to allow the crucifixion, I jumped. Can I find my father even more deeply here? Hallelujah. For me, it was the culmination of a life in which I developed trust that my father would always catch me. Mm. That journey, by the way, has never ended. And those of you that would come to where I am, rest assured, you best not waste a single moment. For I'm continually dying more and more into God. Beloved friends, mm -hmm. we will end this lesson with this. Ask yourself, the feeling, oh, where, 
where is fear still abiding in my mind? Mm. Anything that I still fear? Is it the death of a husband or a wife or a mother or a father or a child or a friend? Mm -hmm. Is the growing up of a child? Is it the loss of a job? Is this being without shelter? Where is the age of your fear? Mm -hmm. Can I imagine abiding without a man in my life? Mm. Can I abide without a woman in my life? This is nothing more than mother and father issues. It is an authority problem. The awakened ascended masters abide only with God. Mm. They cannot only in, they cannot any longer comprehend possessing or being possessed. They allow all things and trust all things. They love without reserv reservation. The one who stands before them as the embodiment of their, the, of their very beloved, the content of essence, which is the presence of God. For when you look upon your brother or sister and see only Christ, mm. have seen with the eyes of Christ, and Christ simply loves. Mm. Therefore, indeed, beloved ascended masters, be at peace. Amen. 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 Did everybody understand that? Amen. So, my fear, my fear is that I won't be able to create. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will assure you that. Let me ask you this. I want all of y'all not try not to create and see what happens. It's impossible. <laughs> I know. It's impossible. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I like to create like the positive part, you know, the loving part. But sometimes it's like you find how to keep thinking about just those things. Here's a simple way. Everybody say this with me. Good, good holy, 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 and beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> When you create, good, holy, you create and beautiful. only in the good, the holy, and the beautiful. Because that is the essence of how you were created. That is the essence of your being. Amen. 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 So Amen. now it teaches you only how to create in love. It only teaches you how to heal in love. It only teaches you how to yes. manifest things in love. It only teaches you how to desire more of God in love. Amen. Let me give you another key and then we'll end. The more you love yourself, the more you can love another. Come on. Amen. The greater you in me, so I got to love the greater in me to love another. Ooh. Say now, that. Teaching say me that. to love my enemy. Ooh, say that. It teaches me to rejoice in trouble because now I understand love. It teaches me to pray for the president. No. He's telling lies. Oh. <laughs> Get some nerves, huh? <laughs> number, number 45. Nobody about it, but nobody pray for him. Number 45. Yeah, pray for him. Love, love. Everybody don't like him, but I say love your enemy. Oh, that's a hard pill to swallow, Pastor. Ooh, number 45. I don't even call him president. I pray for him, but I just call him number 45. Oh, whatever. Still love 45. <laughs> he'll, he'll love him. Yes. Because there's there is a divine purpose in all of that. Can let me ask you this: Can you see Christ in forty five? Come on, work with me. Okay, okay. Very, very hard, and she say yes. Everybody, look at forty five, and, and yeah. Take take that with you. Glory God. And I want if you to I look answer, at your government leaders answer, and I want you to look at all of that, that. If I answer that honestly, I have called number 45 the Antichrist. <laughs> Everybody has. But doesn't God set one up and set one down? Excuse me? God sets one up and sets one down, don't he? <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Look, 45 is nine. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. 
<laughs> but everybody has to look at 45. Everybody has to look at nine with the <laughs> eyes of Christ in love at the Amen. end of the day. Amen. You yeah. know what? If I, can I just say this? What I have learned, I have learned that I will, I love myself so much, I will not let anyone stop me from loving them. Hallelujah. Yes. They love me I, 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 I love myself so much that I will not let anyone stop me from praying. For my enemies, I press everybody. Amen. Amen. But I'm just saying, I just try to stay in a place because I, 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 it's kind of like what Paul always says. I don't want to go back on that other side. Mm. Man, I don't like that feeling. Yes, for me, for me, I have no more enemies because I, I don't want to go back and love them Amen. so much. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Well, God told me I can't straddle the fence, so that's where I'm at. Can't serve two masters. You're either going to love one or hate the other. Choose. Right. He told me I can't straddle the fence, so I just have to. And since this ministry is only about love, you can't hate nobody. That's right, and I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't hate anybody. Amen. All right. Any questions, comments, concerns before y'all pray out us? Pray us out. Who wants to pray this evening? Who wants to pray? Any volunteers? Anyone? Anyone? It don't have to be long. It can be whatever. Lily, you got us? <laughs> you got us here? No? Okay. Yeah. Feel up here. <laughs> Melissa, you got us? <laughs> hey, Dad, you want to pray us out? <laughs> no, Pastor. For me? You're doing yes. good. Hey, Dad, you want to pray us out? <laughs> yeah, I'll pray, yeah. All right. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank uh, everybody for th Heavenly Father, thank everybody for being able to join this meeting. Yes, yes. And I'm happy to meet everybody. Yes. Um, God is good and God is about love. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Wasn't hard at all, was it? No. Okay. It's it's much easier when somebody <laughs> else doing it. Yeah. <laughs> everybody got to learn to pray for themselves, but. Here's the thing. When you proclaim prayer publicly, you proclaim the presence of God publicly. Amen. <laughs> I leave you with that. I love you all. Have a blessed week, deliberately creating, and thank you all again for joining us. We love you. If you need anything, definitely reach out.